Do you remember what I said in the part one of this Podman tutorial? The Docker is not the only tool available to create and running containers. There is also Podman. And Docker Desktop is not the only UI tool available to manage containers. There is also Podman Desktop. Hello and welcome back to this Podman tutorial from Zero to Hero. And welcome to the last part of this tutorial, part five. My name is Giuseppe, I'm a senior software engineer at Amadeus. In this video, you are going to learn Podman Desktop. So you are going to learn how to install Podman Desktop, how to pull an image in Podman Desktop, run a container and working with container. You are going to use all the commands that you learned in the previous video with Podman Desktop. So let's get started. Podman Desktop is a UI tool that makes running and managing containers much easier with an intuitive user experience. You can install it on Windows, macOS, and Linux, and you also install the underlying Podman utility if needed. Let's start with the installation. I'm going to install it on a macOS machine. As you can see, I don't have Podman installed. So first thing first, go to the official Podman desktop website, Podman desktop.io. Here you can find all the information about Podman Desktop, including the official documentation. Click on the download link on this page. You have to select the right Podman Desktop installer for your machine, Podman Desktop for Windows, macOS, or Linux. In my case, I have to click on download now for the Podman Desktop for macOS. Once the download is completed, I can open the installer to install Podman Desktop. Perfect, it was faster. Now I have Podman Desktop installed on my machine and it's up and running. This is the UI of the Podman Desktop. In the dashboard view, you can see the highlighted information, some action that I need to do, and the featured extensions. Here I have a message, Podman Desktop was not able to find an installation of Podman. Yes, it's right, because I don't have Podman installed as you saw previously. To start working with containers, Podman needs to be detected or installed. In my case I need to install it. How? Open the terminal and manually do it? Not at all. I can just click on the install button and then yes, so in this way I can easily install Podman on my system. The version that I will install will be the version 4.6.2 as of today. Click on yes. Now I can see this pop-up window where I can click on continue, read and agree to the license and then install it. Perfect. Now I can start using Podman. Now I switch back inside the terminal to double check the Podman installation. Yes, I can see now that Podman has been correctly installed on my system version 4.6.2. Now I switch back to Podman desktop. I can see now the message Podman 4.6.2 has been installed but not ready. To start working with containers, Podman needs to be initialized. I click on Initialize and Start button. Perfect. Now Podman has been initialized and also Podman Desktop is ready to be used. Before starting to use it, I want to switch to the terminal and tap the command Podman Machine List in order to see the default machine created and currently running. This is necessary to run Podman on macOS and Windows machine. We discussed this in the part one, introduction to Podman. Okay, now let's discover all the views available in Podman Desktop. You have the dashboard view where you can find all the useful resources and the featured extension. In the menu bar, you can switch between different views like containers view, where it lists all the containers, the pod views, the image views, and the volume view. Of course, all these views are empty because I haven't pulled or run any images yet. Let's do it 
click on the image view and on the top right corner I can see two buttons to pull an image from a registry or build an image. I can paste the image here and then click on the pull image button. Yes, download completed. Now inside the image view I can see the new image Podman Hello pulled. I can click on it and see different tabs like the summary tab, here the tag, in this case latest, the history tab and the inspect tab, where I can see all detail about the image in JSON format. I can select the image, click on the delete button if I want to completely delete it from my system, or as you can see on the right, in the action section, I can edit the image, show the history, or push the image to a kind cluster. I can easily run the image by clicking on the play button. If I do so, I will be see a new view with different tabs, basics, advanced, networking, and security settings. In the basic tab, I can see and customize the basic settings. I can choose a name for the container, specify the entry point, and define the port mapping. I will leave the default settings and click on the start container button. And that's it. In the view container, I can see my brand new container created based on the image Podman Hello. Also, inside the container view, I can click on the container to see more information about it, splitting in different tabs, summary, the logs, expect, cube, and the terminal. Inside the log, I can see the log produced by the container. It's a simple image with a message, hello Podman world. In the expect tab, I can find all information about the container, such as the image. In the cube tab, I can find the Kubernetes YAML manifest file used to create a pod with a container. You learn about this in the part four. And last but not least, thanks to the terminal tab, I can go inside the container. In this case, I cannot show you the content because the container is not running. On the top right corner, I can see the action buttons such as relaunching the container. Let me delete it. Now I'm going to create a new container from an existing image. This button takes me to the image view where I can pull the image. As I did in part two, I will now create a new container from the image nginx docker.io slash nginx perfect i have pulled my image now i will go to the container view click on the create container button select the existing image choose the nginx image and then click on the play button in the basic view i can see the host port mapping the port 9000 to the 80 inside the container. In this case, I'm going to assign a name to the container, like for example, my nginx. Then I will start the container. Yes, my nginx container has been created. I can stop it, delete it, or perform other actions. Let me open the browser. As you can see, the port is 9000. Yes. It's working. Let me go back to the container view. If I click on the container, I can see the state of the container running and the port 9000 and the current log of Nginx. Also in this case, I can inspect it and view the image. I can find the Kubernetes YAML file and finally clicking on the terminal tab because the container is still running I can go inside it and check, for example, the content of the container. What's next? Do you remember the container image called PDM Golan that we created and pushed to the Docker Hub registry in part three? Well, let's use it with Podman Desktop. Let me copy the image name and paste it here. Let me specify the tag as latest. Click on the pull image button. Perfect, now I have successfully pulled the PDM Golan image. 
Now I will select the image and click on the play button. I will enter the name as PDM Golang and set the port mapping as 8080 to 8080 and then start the container. Yes, I have my beautiful PDM Golang container up and running with the port 8080. I have the possibility to create the Kubernetes in YAML, so let me copy it and paste it in a file called PDM Golang Pod YAML. Why I'm doing this? You will understand in a moment. Now, as you know better than me, in the terminal tab, I am inside the container and I can interact with it. Last but not least, I'm going to open it. Copy the link, open a new tab, and paste the link here. And here it is. Hello, Podman from Go. If you remember, we discussed the feature of Podman to create a pod in the previous video, part 4. Now it's time to show you how to use this feature with Podman Desktop in the container view. When I click on the Play Kubernetes YAML, a new window appears where I can select the YAML file from which I want to create the pod. Here I'm selecting the PDM Golan pod YAML file that I previously created. Select using Podman container engine, then click on the play button. Just perfect. I can see the pod and container ID in the output. In the pod view, I can see my new pod. And inside the container view, I can see the containers within the pod. As you can see, I have two containers inside the pod, PDM Golang and the infra container. We discussed about the infra container in the previous video part 4. Now I'm going to refresh the page localhost 8080 and I can see that my container inside a pod created via the Kubernetes YAML file with Podman is working as expected. The last thing that I want to show you is the tab volume where you can easily, with just a click, create a new volume in Podman Desktop needed by some container. By clicking on the volume, I can see just the summary and the expect tab. The only action I can do for the volume is to delete it. In Podman Desktop, you have access to a variety of settings that are organized in different sections. These settings can be checked and customized according to your needs. For example, under the resource section, you can view the Podman machine that has been created and it's currently running. You have the option to restart it, stop it, or delete it. Additionally, you can configure the proxy settings, add or modify registry, and explore other features. And this is Podman Desktop. Remember that I use the version 4.6.2. If you want, you can even share your feedback, in my case, positive feedback, with the Podman team. Thank you for watching the fifth part of the Podman tutorial. I hope that you find this video helpful for your containerization journey. In this video, you'll learn what is Podman Desktop, a simple UI tool to work with container. I hope that you enjoyed the complete tutorial of Podman and now that you become a hero. So what's next? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos. Thank you again and see you soon.